didn't I, I find me on Instagram as Andelaine K. Haven't got a Facebook page as yet. Getting there. Um, yeah, or here on YouTube. So welcome and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're viewing this. I hope you're having a good time. Um, I'm going to show you some finished objects. Finished objects? Um, some works in progress and some other bits and pieces and I've got some good news if you're mm, interested in some artwork. Yay! The first finished object that I will show you is, let me just have a rummage in here, is Moment. It's the beach comma shore in my frustration at some stage. Anyway, so what's up, no? Try it. That's that's a you may have seen it. It was on Nick Picks, a Nick Picks kit. Never bought a kit before. Always sort of just got a pattern and sort of got some yarn and started. Um, it was a Nick Picks kit with a cotton linen blend. Um, I thought a cotton and linen might be a good yarn for around here. Change of seasons. Um, not at the moment, it's still very new. Um, just to be warmer and, and probably want to stack up some sweat because we get some still humid and yucky weather here. Um, what can I say about it? I knit this up on, I think it may have recommended size 5 needles but I've done it on six because I want it to be um, bigger and drapier um, a little bit more air flow through it um, which made it quite a bit longer yay it keeps on going keeps on going keeps on going it's a little, little bit at the end but you can wrap it around you and turn it into a um, I wasn't quite too sure about the colours being um, a coral coral surf and you know what is the name of the colours um, but I like it I was really chuffed that I managed to do the lace um, and stripes being a large lady, I've generally steer away from stripes, but yeah, I like it. I quite like it. So that was my first finished object. Second one, now this one is uh, in acrylic, and I had this in oh, stash. For a long time um, and I 
I mentioned the body dysmorphia last time. <laughs> I think that's why I did the beach coma even larger, and larger needles to make it larger because brain. I assume that I'm larger than what I actually am. Um, now this starts with these fluoro fluoro pom poms and goes through rainbow. Changes. It's like a mild type of yarn, but it goes through color changes. Now this was originally going to be, see it's keeping on going and going and to the end. And you see this hole that's just there. This was going to be a shawl collar for um uh, a gelato cardigan. Now I'd knit the whole thing up, the whole cardigan, to the point where I was doing the shawl collar with, I had three buttons in it, um, and at no stage during knitting this whole thing did I think, oh this might be a little bit big, until I got to the um, collar. And I kept on going, kept on going, and reached the end. I thought, I'll just go a little bit further. If I, it's too long, well, I can still, you know, pull it back and fix it up. And then, in my infinite wisdom, decided to put the shawl collar on. Which is a lot better. Cap collar. Um, and realised that... <laughs> The collar from around my neck reached my feet. And I thought, do I need to stop? Um, and then I put this on, and then I tried the car. It was absolutely ginormous, absolutely huge. I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sure I'm. I mustn't have taken my drugs that day. Um, about th four weeks of knitting. <laughs> um, so I ripped back. Oh, that's the other way. Um, I ripped back the whole cardigan, balled it up, put it in a bag, and in disgust went, "I'm not doing that again." Um, what? Why? I don't know. Body dysmorphia. Um, anyway, I decided to keep the collar as a reminder to work to my measurements. I took my measurements and I have them in a book and I have them on my computer um, and work to the measurements. Don't convince myself that I'm going to need something larger. I don't. And I've been losing weight um, 42 kilos to date. So I'm a lot smaller than I was, and um, I left the buttonhole in, wherever that is. I left the buttonhole in to remind me also to think and work to my measurements and not make mistakes like that again. Um, it is a struggle, as a reminder the other way. Um, yeah, but as it turned out, I have a scarf. Oh, <laughs> but I can bang myself with a pom pom. Um, that makes other people smile when they see it because it's just a little bit of silly, and the colours are happy. They're happy, happy colours. I have, this is like um, day glow highlighter orangey pink. It doesn't really come up on camera. I don't know, but it's it's highlighter safety orangey pink color, red. And um, I have a cone of that that's probably two, ki two kilos worth. And it's 
know if you can see that. It's a better lace weight. It's part of the um, um, machine knitting stash that I have. Um, it's a lot. One day, I want to make I'll make a jumper out of this day go color. Um, safety vest red. And then probably team it with some yellow or something. I got this. This is, um, again, it, the whole thing is acrylic. This I got, um, I was part of uh, a protest in front of um, our local members' offices at this stage. Um, the Knitting Nanners, I don't know if you've heard of them. Um, they just, in protest to environmental degradation and, and issues, um, they just sit and knit. That's all. And they wear um, beanies made out of this bright yellow and they have a flower either on the beanies um, with just the bright yellow bright yellow beanies and maybe with the black trim or that sort of thing but bright yellow and they just sit and knit and that's the knitting nanas and um, they protest um, Few of them have been arrested. Why would you arrest somebody that's knitting? Uh, anyway, um, so I was yet to make a beanie out of this. So maybe I could make a jumper out of that. And oh no, that's yeah, that's me. Uh, and bright, disgusting colours. They're not disgusting colours. No colour is disgusting, but. Um, my, my rainbow scarf, that's my uh, second finished object. Um, so with that, that's all I've got at the moment. Um, I've got lots of works in progress. Lots, I just, after getting out of, getting all intimate and, you know, this, um, after getting out of hospital, I had um, I had decided that I couldn't die yet. One, because my granddaughter had asked me to teach her how to paint, and I have to do that. Um, and I couldn't leave this earth without following up on that. I have to teach her to paint. Um, uh, and also, I had, this may seem a little bit weird, is, is it a, a, a knitting or a yarn aholic type thing? I can't leave because I've got too many whips on, in progress. I've got too many whips on the needles. Um, yeah, just stupid things that come through your head. But anyway, uh, in times of stress, um, so when I got out of hospital, and I finished this and the scarf and I actually took this into the hospital with me. Um, and as soon as I got out of hospital, yeah, I'd finished that. Oh, what I do? I cast on some more. It's like, yeah. Oh, hello. That's this. That way. There we go. Hello, Timothy. Yeah. Um, oh, he's coming. He'll, he'll come and visit. So I cast on, and I haven't. I've cast on again. I can't cast. Um, socks. I've never knit socks before. Oh, I half knit some socks. Um, and again, the body dysmorphia kicked in, and I could have put two feet in one sock. Guaranteed that I started knitting them on DK and a cotton acrylic blend, but I thought, oh, here we are. Um, initially, I tried to knit them on nine inch, one inch circulars. I can't remember what they're called. They're not knitting needles, they're earrings. You could thread it through and wear it as an earring. They're tiny. Um, knit them hand fisted. Um, it to work. Um, probably because the yarn was too thick, I had too many stitches on, just eh, 
can't have all the arrows so uh, go down one square and into spotlight and got this yarn it's not just socks it's get the glasses I'm getting new glasses I don't know I'm blind as a carrot at best of times um, 100 grams 420 meters per ball um, needle size 3.25 I think I've got something else up here yep 2.75 I think um, and what is it made out of it's 50% super wash wool 25% polyamide and 25% bamboo and it's in the bright multi mix colorway bright multi mix there you go multi pass so I've got these and I've got two happening at the same time I did think to do two at a time because I can do two at a time magic loop if anything I learned how to do that through my first forehand and it's knitting socks um, but I started on one and just kept going I thought oh and I will I will I know I would get is it second sock syndrome I'd probably get one and go I'm really satisfied with that and that's where I just stop I would rest on my laurels and there it would say so I've done socks not quite two at a time but is it concurrently if I keep swinging this around I'm smacking something guys with me um Turkish cast on Turkish Turkish cast on um I find as a beginner that is really easy to do um, it is stupidly simple to do um, and I'm just going round and round and round and what I'm following is Nathan Taylor sock magician his toe up sock recipe um, I'll do links to that and in his sock recipe he says knit as far as this part of your hand here and then you start um, doing something <laughs> uh, I think it's either increasing or decreasing you start to, to expand the sock for the heel and, and do all, all of that um, yeah so it's oh, I could make a sock puppet out of this if they don't fit my feet, um, which they do so far, um, I make a sock puppet. Oh. Anyway, these are my socks, and I've got two balls going at the same time, center ball, and that is all living. I I've said I was into um, reusing I like recycling if I can use something differently this is my sock bag and I've, I've made it and oh, that's my little that's Timothy having a, a cup of coffee <laughs> I don't know I got that I think I may have got it off the net somewhere I saw it and thought yes I have to have that um, this bag it's canvas it's not lined I didn't make it Toyota did um, it's the headrest the headrest cover for seat covers you know those canvas seat covers you can get they have the seat cover and then the headrest is separate 
we got new seat covers for the car. We have a Toyota yet. And um, when we bought the car, they'd taken the seat covers, but they'd forgotten about the headrest. So when we got new seat covers, took off the old headrest, and I saw it and went, oh, okay, surely we can use that for something. It's not bad material. There's nothing wrong with it. Why, why throw it out? And then Phyllis, my husband, he said, did you put something in that? <gasps> Ding! What a load abode. Um, so it's my soft band. I've got two of them. So I bought some cotton rope, um, threaded it through the already made um, seam at the top, and takes a bit, but there we go, sock bag, um, or small projects, or whatever, but I'm not going to put that, and if I need, what I do is I fold that over, forward, this forward, to move it in the stocking it, and it sits with my knitting in it, ball, not terribly stiff, but enough, it'll sit open enough, um, like a, a bucket bag. So, there you go. Recycle, reuse, rehome, anything and everything. If you can, you do it. Bring my carpenter's axe back in here. Oh! And there we are. And um, on that theme as well, um, I have here, this here is my noodle collection. They're just all the cables and needles and circular needles. They're in here. Um, all sorts. Um, this, see this? Um, Safe Salt Australia. This is the bags that you get when you, I would, we buy, we were buying um, Himalayan rock salt and then I would coat that in a um, a chili puree and then dry that off so each grain of salt is coated in it was ghost chili so coast, each grain of salt is coated in ghost chili and these are the bags that the salt came in and I have a lot of them and that's um, holds my needles and this one here got they're, they're small project bags now um, and a ball of yarn again it's vintage yarn um, I think it's a mohair um, wool maybe some other synthetic um, mix um, it's variegated it's fabulous um, and this I'm going to use on, what's it called? The Sparkling Cider Hat. I've purchased the pattern from Kristen of Wollenbein Yarns. Um, I'm going, this already has quite a halo to it. You can see it's got a bit of, bit of fuzz there. Oh, move my hand. There we go. A bit of fuzz there. So it's already got some mohair in it. But I'll team that with um, some of the other vintage mohair that I've got. I've got white, pale pink, basically every colour that's in this ball I've got um, mohair. So um, I have a dark uh, teal colour that I may use with this. And then I just have to purchase some beads. Um, so yeah, that will be living in yet another safe salt <laughs> project bag. 
I could dye them and make them pretty, but eh, yeah, they they work the way they do. Um, yes, yes. There we go. Um, so here we go again. Yet another project on the go. Now this one is again vintage yarns. It started out as a pattern, but then as soon as I cast on, I no, I'm going to make this up. So it's my own design. Um, I'm teaming vintage. Now this this is just double knitting, double knitting. It's a grey that has a teal through it. I don't know if can we no because the sunlight's. I don't know. Where back here maybe yeah. It's got teal through it, but it's also got, um, and then um, like a, a maroony pink will turn up occasionally in with it. Um, and on the odd occasion, there'll be slubby bits of like a teal green or, or a, um, a maroony pink that will turn up. So what I'm doing is... Makeup. Um, that's lovely. It's probably not quite face wave, but um, yeah. So that's the pink, and it's got a bit of glitter in it. So it's mohair wool with um, I think the, it's the nylon fibers that make it glitter. Oh, excuse me. Um, Yes, so I don't know if you can see that sort of sparkly red bit there. I think it's the synthetic fibres that um, make it glitter. Um, so I've teamed that with with this, holding it double, and I've got this marley fuzzy patterning at the base. That's ribbing. And then I'll keep going. I've got a split hem, and oh, no. there's one of the slubby bits there of the teal, the pale teal color. Let's see if I can find a. Now I started this prior to me losing weight. Uh, I'm looking at it being an oversized, either a boxy or. Um, a tunic length um, uh, jumper. And I'll see if I can find one of the. Um, I don't know if you, you can sort of see that there is. A, it's a pinky in some bits and tearly come back this way in others. So that's that's the slubby bit of um, the teal. And that there is one of the slubby bits. Like it's a maroney pink in there as well. It's really unusual. Um, but I'm not complaining. It was given to me. Um, um, you may have heard of Find Your Faith. I started this. When it was um, all the rage, and I'm still going on it, and I not long started to knit, um, and I thought oh, it looks fairly simple. I'll have a go at that. Um, Again, body dysmorphia, keep saying that, it is, I'm um, still going, 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 and um, it's huge. I know the original is huge, is huge, but I started here. This is a brown, 
I don't know, another recycled, reclaimed yarn. This the second one here is, I think it's Peyton's Tartan. This one here, the pinky one, is um, yet another. Um, they're all 100% wool. Um, but I have no idea what it is. DK, DK weight, I've got pretty much DK sport, DK sort of thing. Um, going back the wrong way. Now, this pinky one here, um, it's similar to the one that I'm going to use on um, the sparkling cider beanie, which is this one. So this one here is what I'm going to use. And this was a pink, pink version of it. And there's the blue version of it. Um, it's wool, mohair, um, blend. And then I'm going now into like a, a greeny grey, which is this one just here. Um, again, they're all recycled. And from there, I don't know what colour to go on to. It is, stitch count is way out to bugger. I'm just going to keep on keeping on and just finish it and never do it again. <laughs> oh, I haven't even finished the round. I just, yeah, I've got... It's, it's broad, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be warm, I'll give it that much, um, yeah, and eventually I'll have this thing, um, to wrap myself up in and the rest of the family. <laughs> so that, that is a long-term project and I've got these stitch markers in it that, um, I've made um, to denote I keep getting mixed up with the wrong side and the right side it's probably why my stitch count is out but um, yeah pink side for pink for one side and, and a little colour of the sun anyway um, ah, blow out yeah and that is in Yet another, ah, that's even getting too big to fit in the bag. Oh, there's a bar of soap in the bottom there. <laughs> I don't know why, it just is. Well, the sun has really come out now. Bright, bright light. Anyway, um, I'm just going to... Uh, finished all my works in progress um, and I just want to I lashed out and I bought the latest pom pom um, I had a look on it had a look at it online and um, it's a bit of an investment um, it's a bit expensive. Uh, it says here is 12, 12 and a half, 12.50 pound. It's a pound. Glasses. And um, in Australian dollars, uh, the exchange rate, uh, yeah. Let me just look that up. Now it's 12 and a half pound. I paid in total. $34.42 so um, yeah it could be a little bit expensive but considering what I went through in January I thought I'd treat myself and uh, also I couldn't buy myself my usual treat being tea or special coffee 
or anything like that because I can't have any caffeine at all. It sucks. And that's, I know in a lot of podcasts you see a lot of people, um, and I'm envious, they're drinking their tea, you know, what am I drinking today and all that sort of thing. Um, I used to be right into teas and I have a collection of teapots and special teacups and all of that. Now I can't have caffeine and this morning I tried um, uh, decaffeinated tea bags. Now it kind of tastes like tea but yeah, nah. Um, I ended up chucking them over the bread. <laughs> So, mm, so this is my guilty pleasure, um, buying publications from overseas. It's produced really nice. And because I was a, um, a designer um, in the print industry, um, something that is produced, you can feel the quality, um, the coating on the, the cover and the, the smell of the print and the paper. It's just nice. And um, having looked online, um, at the patterns that were available, um, I decided that basically every pattern that is in this is in this issue, um, I want to make, which leads to more works in progress, and I'll have to look up yarn substitutions because I'm not going to go out and buy more stash. I have a lot um, of the vintage yarns and things that I've collected. And and also the um, yarn that I'll be dyeing. Um, so I'm not going to go out and buy more yarn. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> so um, I think I'll wrap it up there. i um, been prattling on at you for quite a long time. Um, now, being new to all of this, um, if there are any hints or tips on how to make things better or run more smoothly um, I'd appreciate that um, you can give me uh, um, comments all the thumbs up I'd really appreciate that I need a bit of feedback um, and I need to stop saying um public speaking null sounds I should need more practice with that anyway Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time. Um, oh, 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 I forgot. I nearly, nearly forgot. I did mention in the beginning, way back in the beginning, um, that uh, I was going to mention something regarding artwork. I've been asked to run a painting workshop at our local regional gallery. That's the Pack Saddle Gallery. It'll run for a weekend. And um, I'm really excited. The um, painting, I'm a, I like to teach techniques because everybody has their own talents and their own filters and their own ideas of what they want to achieve when they're painting something. Now, I'd like to teach people techniques to get that creativity that's in them out of them and to put it on canvas on paper on on whatever there's some hair right in front of my glasses can you see help me <laughs> here we go um so oh it's still there oh whatever um so i may i have a, a couple of uh workshops that i have run in the past that um, are techniques based. I teach a series of techniques on day one and then on day two um, we apply those techniques that we've gone through into a landscape painting. Um, uh, I could do it in acrylics or in oils because basically we're using the um, learning the technique. Um, techniques are slightly different for acrylics and oils but I can cope with that I'm not quite sure which I'll go with at the present um, or there is um, skill building 
regarding form and tone. So um, using techniques, be that dry brush or scumbling or wet and wet or a range of different brush type techniques um, to and also um, using those techniques with tone so going from dark um, a dark tone to the lightest of light so we can form something to make it look 3D um, and then we do those exercises and learning that in day one, day two, um, put that into, I generally go to a portraiture, so I'll use that, that tone and form because people want to either do landscapes or they want to do um, portraiture. I want to make it look real. Um, or they come with a photograph of a relative or that sort of thing. Um, I want to end up painting this. So using tone and form to get the 3D sort of shapes of the head. Um, they're the two. I'm, I'm leaning towards the um, painting techniques and then going to a landscape because a lot of people have preconceived ideas of what a face looks like. Art and drawing, painting, is very much like um, knitting, knitting and crochet. You have to learn those techniques first, baby steps, and you have to practice those techniques, those stitches um, first um, on how you handle the needles, how you form those stitches, all that sort of thing. It's the same with painting and drawing. Um, how you hold the pencils and brushes, how you form those strokes and marks that you're making, um, and then how to um, put all of that together into a painting or a drawing. Um, and you put all, all your stitches and all your technique into a garment or an item. Um, yeah. So the, the processes are kind of similar, but different. <laughs> Baby steps, you learn the basic techniques first to build it into your final creation. And I think they say that the, you need about 10,000 hours of practice be, before you become an expert. Um, so practicing those techniques, getting them down, doing it over and over and over and over until gradually you build up in your expertise until you are proficient or you get to the stage where um, you want to be. So there we go. Um, the workshop, it's Armadale, New South Wales in the Pack Saddle Gallery. You'll have to get in contact with if anybody is interested, um, which you probably won't be anyway. I'll um, show pictures and give you a, um, a wrap up of what happens at the workshops and how we go. Um, I've also been asked to um, do a painting that will go to um, decorate the front of the gallery. Now it's not a mural, it's like the um, salons that they used to have this is what they're modelling it on. Um, the salons of, um, you've seen in the movies, like um, the movie of Turner, and where they'd have the paintings all framed all over the wall. Um, that's the sort of look that they're, they're wanting to get on the facade of the gallery, and in there's a bit of a walkway and a staircase into it. So that's what they want to do. They want to create a bit of a, a salon. And they, they're hand-picking... Um, the artists to do that and I'm one of them which I think is fabulous um, the comment was that they don't really have a good landscape artist so they called me I wouldn't call myself that good but it's very flattering to be to be considered in that way um, so I'll do one of these paintings and put it on a board 
and will be fixed to the front of the gallery and covered with a protective UV um, resistant varnish over the top. Um, I'll probably, having done murals and that sort of thing before, um, acrylics and, and acrylics are pretty good for that. Um, I'll have to check. Well, if I, I use artist quality light fast um, pigments in that one, so and having a UV coating over the top of that, it should last. Um, I, if it doesn't, well, fine. It'll be there for a while. It'll look pretty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm ready for chuffed. Um, pleased and chuffed. So with that, um, I'll leave you and um, I'll see you next time. There you go. Thank you.